And now. Yes. Buntendo 64. Yes. I would like to once again open the show, not by talking about uh, Netflix or Trump or how much my parents suck. No. This week, let us kick off the big shoe by talking once again about movie stars and celebrities. Yes. You know, Bunny, it's movie stars and celebrities that fuel the world of Hollywood. Yes. Oh, wait. No, I'm sorry. Did I say uh, Did I say movie stars and celebrities? I meant to say Botox. It's <laughs> Botox that fuels the world of Hollywood. Yeah. And so I just figured, here's a crazy idea. How about starting off this show by talking about famous people? You know, what well, with this being an alleged movie podcast at all. Yes. So here's a list of some absolutely true, somewhat uh, true facts about Hollywood movie stars and celebrities for you, Bunny. Okay? Okay. Okay. Uh, number one. A few weeks ago, a memo was leaked f- regarding Steve Harvey. And I feel like this is almost old news now, but I'm just so obsessed with this. Yes. Steve Harvey, the mustachioed black thumb in a fancy suit. Yes. Who has about five shows on TV right now. Yes. This memo came from one of the five shows that he's currently starring in. I'm not sure which one. Maybe it came from one of his talk shows. I'm not sure. But the memo. Well, well I believe I believe he basically has his own production company. So, so all of his shows. Oh, yeah? Okay. Yeah. So, so, so it's you know, they would all be your employee, like like a uh, worldwide pants with David Letterman and stuff. Yeah, like that. yeah. So the memo spells out in great detail the lengths to which all non-Steve Harvey employees are to leave Steve Harvey the fuck alone. Yes, and it is painfully hilarious how hard Steve Harvey is cracking down on his employees. It's awkward. Yes. You're not supposed to make eye contact with Steve Harvey. You're not supposed to talk to him in the hallways. You're not <laughs> supposed to say hello to him. You're not supposed to get him wet. You are not supposed to feed him after midnight. No one is allowed to breathe the same air as him. And here's the amazing part. All of the bathroom stalls in the entire studio are Steve Harvey's own private bathroom. He actually sets up uh, outhouses outside of the studio where everyone else is supposed to go to the bathroom. Even the women's rooms, they're all Steve Harvey's. He likes to stretch out. You know the one thing that has always bothered me about Steve Harvey? What? I can't remember who he was when he was skinny. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, there are two Steve Harveys in my mind. And I don't remember the first one anymore. Yeah, it it's like Steve Harvey has always been this ubiquitous persona that appears on all of the TV stations. Mm-hmm. I don't remember what he did to get to this level of mm-hmm. fame. Like, But now that he is at this level of fame, all I can see is just who he is now. He's basically like the new Nipsey Russell. Yeah. <laughs> like who the fuck was Nipsey Russell ever? Who the yeah. fuck was this guy? Yeah, but he was always there somewhere. And who names yeah. their kid Nipsey? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why is your name Nipsey? <laughs> yeah, so many questions. So you know what just finished wrapping up their season? Who? What? The uh, beloved TV show Dancing with the Sea Listers. Oh, yes. Dancing with the Sea Listers just finished its 49th season, which is strange because it's only been on TV since 2005. I'm not sure how that's possible. Yeah. Scientists are baffled I, as to how a 12 year old show could be on its 49th season. I, I, I have never seen that show. Of course, I know of its existence. And every time I hear that somebody was on it as somebody that I, that I like, I feel a little sad. Yeah, I've watched it here and there, like, but only no, because... No, Angelette. No, yeah, really? I've watched, it every, I've watched it every every once in a while because of various people. Like, I'm not going to watch Dancing with the Stars. I'm not going to watch Dancing with the Stars. Oh, wait, Chris Jericho is on this? All right, I'll give it a try. But I always <laughs> watch... I always watch the show because of a person who I really like who is quickly eliminated. Yeah. 
And I'm like, oh, wait, I love that stand-up comedian. He's hilarious. Okay, I'll watch this season. And he's off after two episodes. Well, guess I'm done. Mm -hmm. So I, I never make it to the end of a season. I've never made it to the end of a season. See, the problem I have here, okay, with any of these kinds of shows, American Idol or anything like that, but I found a great bullshit show. We'll talk about that in the homework. But okay. anyway, any of these kinds of shows, Dance Fever with Denny Tarrio. Dance <laughs> Fever. Yeah. Mr. Grease 2. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Dance Fever. So it used to kind of come on odd time. Like some fucking shows just, come, just would come on at really weird times where you could not help you couldn't avoid them yeah like like the fucking show would know what room you're in yeah and beyond and dance, the solid dance gold fever dancers. Yeah. dance fever yeah. was just one of those shows you could not help but watch it um yeah and i always fucking just hated it but we only had four channels Yep. You didn't have much of an option here. Yeah. Man, I'm getting fucking old. Yeah. This is an old man's story. Yeah. I mean, it's dance fever. Yeah. But I but I see this one dance I see this one episode of Dance Fever. And Frank Zappa's on it. Really? <laughs> okay. And, you know, after they dance, all the judges, he was one of the judges, they have to rate them. And give a little explanation. It's the same format. You know, it's American Idol and all that. And Frank had given them very high marks. And he said because they seem sincere. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, well, that's it then. That's it. This whole genre. And I did not even know at the time it would be a genre. Nothing yeah. will top that. Yeah. Nothing will top that. And One in of, my opinion, nothing has. I have pretty much that exact same story, but set in a different time. Because I, I would always watch um, uh, this show on the USA Network when I was like in, in seventh, eighth grade, and it yeah. was on USA Network, and it was... Teen Dance Party USA. Oh, okay, okay. And it would just well, that's where the, that age gap comes in, yeah. Yeah, and it would have the hottest hits, and they would have teens dancing to the hottest hits, and and I would always watch it after school, primarily because there it was a really great place to see sweaty, cute teenage girls. Yeah, that was that was the age that I was at that time. Every once in a while, they would have like a popular musical act at the time lip sync in the studio. And for some bizarre reason, like yeah. it's Teen Dance Party USA. Mm -hmm. There is one episode and this did happen. It actually existed and there's proof of it. It's on the Internet. It's on YouTube. There's an episode uh -huh. where Nine Inch Nails was on. Yeah. Nine inch fucking on nails. Teen Dance Party. Yeah. Was on Teen Dance Party USA and they sang a uh, uh, down in fuck, it. Fuck you like an animal. <laughs> yeah. No, it was it was it, in the beginning. When, oh, oh, in my head, that's become a Bill Hicks routine. Yeah. <laughs> All the little Debbie Gibsons running away. Ah! Ah! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fucking fucking Trent Reznor was on Teen Dance Party USA. And it's like I would question him. I would I would go up to him and question him about it. But from what I've seen of his performance on Teen Dance Party USA, that man did not know where he was. <laughs> there is no way that man has any recollection of Teen Dance Party USA. But whatever. But hey, he now has an Oscar or two under his belt. So hey, it must have worked for you, Trent. See now that whole crop of musicians nine inch nails um Stone Maryland temple Manson. pilots pearl jam you know the the ones in and around the the grunge period you yeah. know that was that was like 
really coming toward the death of video and like the death more or less of MTV. Mm-hmm. A, a butterfly that can coo- that went into a cocoon and came out a caterpillar, basically. Yeah, that's what yeah, happened that's to MTV. Really yeah. Um, so like the only one I really got any kind of attachment to, and even then, very very little, was Tool. Tool, was, yes. Those were some awesome fucking videos. Yeah, they were. Down with the decoupage. Yeah. Much like Dance Fever, music videos should have died. Yeah. They would have yeah. died with dignity. Yeah. So anyway, Dancing with the Sea Listers. It just finished its 49th season. People are studying the show to figure out how it's possible. Yeah. That a show that has been on for 12 years, it's on its 49th season. So far, the only logical answer to this seasonal conundrum is that perhaps, unbeknownst to us, Maybe Dancing with the Sea Listers is secretly a TV show for dogs. Ah. Oh. So the show is just is it has just been doing the show in dog years. I mm-hmm. that that makes That makes sense. Well, wasn't Rick Perry on that show? Yes, I believe so. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, that 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 explains yeah. it. Yeah, because anyway, if you have a, if you have a notice, if you whistle, Rick Perry yes. kind of tilts his head a little bit. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. That's my Scooby. That's my Scooby impression. I really like it. And really, if you give a dog a choice of outfits, you're gonna choose the one with rhinestones every time. Okay. I, I every time. I got con- I got confused. I thought you were doing a if you give a mouse a cookie. Oh. Reference. If you give a dog a choice of outfits, he's going to want some milk to go with it. He will. And if he wants he milk, he's going to want a straw, and then he's going to want a napkin, and it's this whole thing. Cigar. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, the season just ended, and this season's winner of Dancing with the Sea Listers was, as always, sports celebrity you've never heard of. That's a big win. That's a big <laughs> win for him or her. Congratulations to him or her for winning the season's 49th season of Dancing with the Sea Listers. So this this next bit here is something I had a, a really good long conversation with my wife about. And a, it, I, I, I'm a firm believer of this story. So Sarah Highland. Okay. She is one of the daughters from the inexplicably still popular television show Modern Family. Okay. Specifically, specifically she's the dumb daughter. All there's right. the dumb daughter, there's and there's the attractive daughter, and then there's the dumb son. So those three young kids, they've grown up, and now they're like in their 20s. So Sarah Highland is one of those kids. She is under fire on the internet for a picture she shared on Instagram. She shared a picture of herself, and she, was, she thought she looked good, body positivity, yada, yada, yada. She looked crazy skinny. She does look crazy skinny all yeah. the time. She's, she's a crazy skinny young woman well people starting attack started attacking her on instagram and on the internet and calling her anorexic yeah and now she is both denying the claims of anorexia and trying to defend the picture citing body positivity the internet isn't buying it and they're shitting all over her and hey this is going to seem harsh but here's the real issue at play here women are allowed to be proud of their bodies as long as they're not skinny Okay. Like body positivity for women, that's fine if you are a uh, bigger or fuller figured woman. But here is this actress, Sarah Highland. She's like 22 years old. She's 104 pounds, and she shared a picture of herself on the ins- uh, on ins- on the Instagram and Ooh. said, "I'm really proud of my body." That's her mistake. She is super skinny. You can't be proud. You can't. Uh, is she like? Is she like Auschwitz kind of skinny? No, she's just she's just a, a, a short, skinny waif of a woman. But apparently, if you're skinny and you cite body positivity, you're just going to be made fun of. If, uh, if an overweight woman, if an over, I don't know, I, I, I guess it's just because people automatically assume you are skinny. You can't be proud of being skinny. You must be anorexic. We're going to call you names. 
oh, here is this uh, overweight woman, this slightly curvy woman. She's saying body positivity. Yes, that's so brave. You're so brave. You are a feminine warrior. Oh, wait, you're skinny. You can't, no body positivity for you. Yeah, and it's kind of funny because when I was in the hospital about a year ago, um, one of the nurses um, was frighteningly skinny. Yeah. You know? And as we were getting our, like, regular cigarette break kind of a thing, um, as I was coming out, she was already talking and talking about how much of of a bitch it is to be as skinny as she is. And how she gets comments like, or eat a sandwich and things like that. Fucking jokes, honestly, I would make. So I'm glad I walked in the middle of that conversation. Yeah, you know, but she was she was really venting her feelings, you know, yeah. and it was like, wow, fuck, I never thought about that before. Yeah, she was like, you know what? It's really no fun shopping in the boys' department. It's not. <laughs> yeah, you know, interesting. Anyway, Sarah Highland, God bless her. Like you're allowed to be skinny. Yes, you know. Yes, I, I don't even. I, I still don't even know who that is. So, yeah. I definitely didn't notice the, the you, story about if her. You saw, but if you saw a picture, you you'd probably know who yeah. she is. But that did remind me. Um. So I was kind of out of anything to watch. That's not true. I was putting off watching Twilight. Um, Twilight legit. So I was cruising around Netflix, and I saw Sarah Silverman. And I, I yes, stopped. That's a new comedy special. Yes, and so I. Put I, it on my list. Oh yeah, so I stopped for a minute and thought about it because I couldn't remember uh, if the last time I saw her, if Sarah Silver, Silverman, Silverman was funny, um, and she was. I was thinking of Amy Schumer. Um, God. But I start watching it, and I I, I notice. That it looks like Sarah Silverman's put on a couple of pounds, which I'm fine with because me personally, I like my celebrities to start breaking down relatively the same time as I do. You yeah. know? So yeah. it's fine with me. Uh, but what I found really strange was she appears to have gotten shorter. Really? And her head was the same size. Interesting. So, so that, she's, huh? So she's gaining weight but losing height. Yeah, she's like yeah. compacting. Yeah, she's becoming a she's becoming a bobblehead. Which, of course, I mean, I mean, really, if you can really picture in your mind what I'm seeing, yeah, your first thought looking at Sarah Silverman is. What the fuck happened to my TV? <laughs> yeah. So now I'm just flipping back and forth between things. And no, it's just it's just Sarah Silverman. Yeah. But it's One kind of, of fascinating I, at the same time. I love Sarah Silverman's concert movie, Jesus is Magic. But not because of Sarah Silverman. Because the movie was... Uh, uh, co-written and directed by Liam Lynch, and he is the creator of Syphil and Ollie, the sock puppet TV show on MTV. Yeah, and I love that goddamn show so much <laughs> that it spilled in to uh, Sarah Silverman's made for TV. It, it, Sarah Silverman's a uh, concert movie. Yeah, the fact that Liam Lynch from Syphil and Ollie helped create that TV special. Um, is probably the main reason why the main reason why that her movie is filled with so many weird ass songs. Yeah. That's Syphil and Ollie's wheelhouse. Yeah. Oh, you know what's coming back in a, a bizarre form? You know what's coming back? Um fucking Dr. Katz. Dr. Katz, yeah. I, I, I never Katz I never Katz. liked Dr. Katz. I didn't like that oh. whole squiggly shit and oh, I never well, found that guy like funny. This then you will like this because Dr. Katz is coming back as a series of 
audio books that you can only download from audible.com. Okay. So it'll be Dr. Katz, and he's still interviewing uh, uh, stand-up comedians and celebrities. And the interesting part is the entire cast is coming back, including Dr. Katz's son, Ben, who is now super famous as the voice of Bob's Burgers and Archer. Oh, okay. And the can of uh, mixed vegetables from Wet Hot American Summer. Oh, the can of mixed vegetables. Yes, Bob from Bob's Burgers was in Wet Hot American Summer. Bella just put two and two together, and she's very excited. Ah. So, so right. back to celebrity news. Very excited about this. I learned something this week. So the documentary King of Kong, A Fistful of Quarters. Yes, okay. Great fucking documentary, right? Great documentary, okay. I think I know Great where you're going. The movie was created by first-time uh, filmmaker Seth Gordon, and that quirky-ass video game documentary is such a beloved fucking film now that the director became that Seth Gordon, the filmmaker, became a very successful director, and I didn't know this. He directed Horrible Bosses. Okay. With uh, Jennifer Aniston and uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, yeah. Charlie from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Spaceship! He also <laughs> directed Identity Theft, which I couldn't get through because despite the fact that it has Sookie in it, the movie really sucks ass. Oh, okay. I, like, I, I, really, I really hate that movie. So he has a very successful career as a director, and that career may very well be coming to an end now because he also directed the guy who made King of Kong a fistful of quarters also directed the fucking Baywatch movie. Yes. How in the world did this guy go from making a Billy Mitchell King Kong documentary uh -huh. to making a film with The Rock? And Zach Efron. I have no idea how his uh, career trajectory came about, but goddamn that good for you. You is, know, yeah, that is strange. Yeah, that is that is stranger than James Gunn's trajectory. Yeah, yeah. Nobody so, escapes from trauma. Yeah, trauma oh, yeah. is That's trauma weird. is not Roger Corman. Yeah, it is weird ass that that he escaped from trauma because yeah, nobody escapes from that. But he Except made that, he made you know. such a nice he, he made such a nice shot, such a nice transition out of it, going from trauma to slither. Yeah, where he hooked up with competent people. Yeah, and and. Made a movie that's kind of half trauma and half real movie that turned out really good. Yeah, I like I like Slither a lot. I like Sl Slither, like I I like Tremors, and I like both of them because I like the Blob. Yeah, it's just a good old fashioned monster movie. My niece, with Michael Rooker. My niece Deanna is obsessed. Not with Tremors, but with the entire Tremors universe. Oh. She's seen every goddamn Tremors movie. She knows all of the details. She knows the backstory. She knows fucking everything about every Tremors movie, which is impressive because I've only seen number one. I've it's, never seen. I love that first it's movie. Not, Kevin because Bacon. it's not Tremors if it's not Fred Ward. And Kevin fucking Bacon. Kevin and young Kevin Bacon, too. That's the amazing part. Now when I think of Kevin Bacon, I think of like a fairly delightful old man who's had some work done. Those, but, those damn, two characters were that movie. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Maxwell? Uh, I think the only thing saying about food is is making me hungry. Uh, so you want something to eat? Here's an idea. Here's an idea. Okay, Are we Maxwell. About food? Killing two birds with one stone. Okay, you're hungry, and hear me out here. Our dog is really old. Mm. 
what if you still haven't put two and two together? That's fine. I'm just going to come right out. What if we eat the dog? No. No meaning yes. <laughs> no, you don't want to eat the dog? Okay, I'll take that as a soft yes. Yes. I don't want to We're not going to kill Joanna. We're going to put her out of her misery. It's an alternate We're really the yes. heroes. No, 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 no. No? Okay. Uh, first off, close the fridge. 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 There you go. Do you want a popsicle? Yes. Do you want a banana one? Or one of the other ones? Uh, Take your time. I'm not recording a podcast or anything. Oi. There you go. Uh, I need someone to open it. You need someone to open it. Now you're asking for too much. Okay, fine. Uh, let me open it for you. Do not make a mess with this popsicle, okay? Trust in you here. And also... When were we talking about food during this podcast? Yeah. Oh, Kevin Bacon. Oh. Kevin Bacon. Nice pull, Maxwell. Nice. nice. I got to give that one to you, man. Nice pull. Maxwell freaked us all the hell out because over the last couple of days, he's been asking us to give him beer. Daddy, can I have a beer? No, you can't have a beer. And then he, like, collapses on the floor crying. I just want a beer. And we're like, Maxwell, beers are for adults. No, they're not. And finally, after, like, three days of him throwing a fit over beer, finally Natasha put two and two together because she's the smart one in this uh, in this outfit. And she goes, oh, my God. Maxwell, there's a difference between beer and root beer. Oh. Root beer is a soda anyone can have. Just beer, though. That's for adults. <laughs> yeah, I want the one that kids can have. Okay, yes, that's root beer, and you can have one. <laughs> Maxwell's, Maxwell's a smart one. Maxwell's, he's out thinking all of us. I, I, I was thinking what you, were, what you said was, it's whiskey in this house or nothing. <laughs> No, we're a low point beer state. Oh, so we're drinking. We're all drinking weak ass watered down beer. Well, well, he can so, have he can have one of those, <laughs> right? So, so the amazing thing about this Baywatch movie, it stars The Rock, and also Zac Efron, which is actually he, and he's actually been doing okay. He's yes. funnier than I thought he was going to be. It was written by. Um, Two of the guys from the state, uh, Thomas Lennon and Robert Ben Garant. They also wrote Night at the Museum and Night at the Museum 2 and a bunch of other movies. And it's directed by the guy who made King of Kong a fistful of quarters. So I'm not exactly sure how the film got such bad reviews. Mm -hmm. But it did. And hopefully it, it doesn't destroy Seth Gordon's career. But anyway... In all of the press junkets for Baywatch, the director said that he is hard at work turning King of Kong into an actual, honest-to-God, totally serious musical. Oh. So he's, he's, he's hard at work turning King of Kong into a musical, and I'm going to be moving into the bedroom for a little bit here, away from the rest of the family. They're a bit distracted by Adventure Time Minecraft to care about what I'm doing. So, okay, I'm in the bedroom. So I'm very excited about the King of Kong musical. In fact, I would now like to sing to you a song that I have begun to write for the upcoming King of Kong musical. Okay. Okay, I'm very excited about this song. I've been working on it. I've been workshopping it. It's a good song. It's called... Billy Mitchell is a big fat fucking cunt bag. Oh, my and, mom uh, used to sing this to me. Yeah, yeah, it, and it it goes but, like this. But completely not. Yeah, it goes like this. This is what I have so far. Oh, that's all I have so far. But it's I, I, I'm for Clem. I think it's a good start. Yeah, is the important thing. I think it's, it's a good start. Bones. 
Yeah. There's a lot of structure that you yeah. can do there. Yeah, because Billy Mitchell is a is a douche waffle. But that but King of Kong has also relaunched their career. Oh yeah. I've oh, just yeah. I've just seen their third, which like I I I do not know why I like these movies. I don't. <laughs> King of Kong was a really good movie. These other ones are not. I really like but, but Man I'm gonna versus watch Snake. it. What? I really liked I really liked the documentary Man vs. Snake. I don't remember that one. It's oh, on no, 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 that was no no no, I do. That was the one one about Nibbler. Yeah, Nibbler. Yeah, yeah. yeah I watched it and I saw well, no. somewhere Billy Mitchell talking about another upcoming movie yeah so like this is completely and i'm pretty sure this one they're just going to start documenting because like they're the king of kong has made the competitive arcade gaming like really popular again they're making money on this again they're running tournaments again so they're going to start just doing documentaries on the tournaments and i'm like yeah i i don't know i don't know why and i actually feel like I, I hate my little my myself a little for it. But I'll watch it. Yeah. I'll yeah. watch it. I what's wrong with us? Billy Mitchell. <laughs> Billy Mitchell sued Cartoon Network and the creators of their car, of the sh- cartoon regular show. Yeah. Because um on the show regular show, it's this bizarre nonsensical almost avant-garde cartoon about these uh, weird creatures that work at a park and yeah. Do you go to the bathroom? It's cold. Okay, let me get you a bowl or something. Okay, it's it's okay. It's okay. Here you go. Here you go. Okay, you're good. Can I eat it? Yes, you can eat it. Huh? Can I eat it? It makes your mouth cold. Yeah, it, that's what popsicles do. Yeah, I'm, well, I'm sorry, baby. I'm sorry. Okay? Next time, I'll try and get you a hot popsicle, if that's at all possible. So anyway, um, a regular show is this really bizarre, totally weird, messed yeah. up cartoon, and these his, all these weird things happen. Uh, Mark Hamill plays this weird Yeti monster named Skips, who just skips everywhere. Okay. It's really bizarre. And there, they had a video game episode where the guys were going, uh, went to a video game tournament to win this thing called the Mega Glove. And when they, when they finally got to like the main level, this giant head appeared, and it's the head of the greatest video game player in the world, and it looks an awful lot like Billy Mitchell. Oh, okay. So Billy Mitchell got pissed, and it's like, hey, that's my likeness. You need to pay me. So he sued the makers of regular show, and they went to court over it. And the judge said, yes, there is one difference between this character on regular show and you, Mr. Mitchell, and that's the fact that you are in a giant 30-foot tall floating head. (laughs) And because of that, Mr. Mitchell, I am throwing out this case. And I really love I really love that. That's a really great. Well, I, I I can't see how he could have gotten away with it either, because because like if anything is parody, it sounds yeah. like this show is parody. Yeah. But he, um, but but God, but see that's part of it. I love yeah. hating him. Oh yeah, I love yeah. hating him. You know he's a Trump supporter. You just know. Oh yeah, him. absolutely. Absolutely. And politics has never come up once because he's just that kind of douchebag. Uh-huh. Yeah, because he knows. He knows. Yeah. Yeah. And finally just like, this week. Just like you damn well know he's cheated a good few times, too. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And finally this week in No Duh News, Mariah Carey is apparently a big-headed, controlling diva bitch. Oh! Wow. Surprise, surprise, surprise. I, I, I always thought she was so down-to-earth. Yeah, she seemed so nice. Hmm? 
So there's a movie coming out this summer. It's called The House. I'm really excited to see it. It stars Will Ferrell and Amy Poehler and their husband and wife and their daughter is going to college and they can't afford it. So they open an underground casino inside their house. And I love this movie. Specifically, there's a line in the Red Band trailer that's out on YouTube that has quickly worked its way into uh, my wife and I's lexicon. And they're talking about, wow, our daughter's leaving. Our daughter's finally leaving the house. Our only daughter. Yeah, you know what that means. Yeah, we're just going to be banging like crazy. Yeah, we're just going to be doing it everywhere and every <laughs> every area of the house. Yeah, just going to be slapping skin, just always <laughs> just going down on each other. And and they they they're acting, they're saying it like they don't care. And Will Ferrell, in just like the the greatest, just most straight man way, he says, "Yeah, you're." You're going to have to um, get your passport in order. Because I'm going to take you to Fucktown. <laughs> and it's such a great line. And I love it so much. And I'm constantly saying it to Natasha now. And I'll, I'll start it out. And I'll be like, yeah, honey. You're going to have to. Uh, the kids are going to Upward Bound. The teens. Yeah, you're going to have to. um update your passport and you can hear emerald in the other room going stop it guys <laughs> no oh that makes it so much better <laughs> oh yeah yeah so 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 they they're doing reshoots they did reshoots for the house and they're doing reshoots because it's like oh wait a second this might be a big huge hit we can release this during the summer this is going to be a huge movie yes maxwell Okay, then just wait. Just wait, and the and and the popsicle will melt. It's already starting to melt. You can see it's melting. So just wait, okay? I'm not gonna microwave it for you right now. Maybe during the break. You want water in it? That's just gonna water it down. Just just wait. Trust me, okay? Okay. There's barely any popsicle there anyway. It'll melt very soon. So they they do reshoots for the movie The House. And let me just say, because because now it's already been said too many times without this being addressed. Okay, everybody, stop making house movies. House or derivatives of house, the house, house who, house. Stop it! Stop it! It's 2017. Did you think that name wasn't taken? Although. Okay. I would love to see more kid and play house party movies. Well, I'm okay with it if you add the party. Yeah. I am I am okay with on the left. That's a good point. Okay. But or just... house party two. That's when they had their pajama jammy jam. Or house party three. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so so during reshoots, they decide to add a few big name cameos to the house. So they pay an arm and a leg. They pay a ton of money so that they can get Mariah Carey for a day, right? Okay. They pay a bunch of money, a bunch of fucking money, so that Mariah Carey can be in the can be in their movie. So so the plan is is that she's going to be in the she's going to show up in the film. She's going to uh, perform a song at the underground casino because it's gotten so big and popular and then there's going to be uh some bad guys who come in and they start shooting the place up and mariah carey is shot and killed in the film this is okay i can see how that would be amusing (laughs) yeah and she takes the money she agrees to be in the film she's she 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 is paid to do this first off she shows up hours late Crazy late, like four hours late mm-hmm. for her one day of shooting. Yeah. They only have her for a day anyway, and she's already four hours late. Secondly, when she shows up, she decides she's not going to perform the song that she agreed to do. She wants to do a different song. Okay? okay. Already, this is, already this is kind of fucked up. But then here's the part. So she gets 
she she's supposed to perform a song and then get shot to death. That's in the script. She's playing herself. She's singing a song. She's shot to death. She and she dies. But this is Mariah Carey we're talking about here. So she decides. Yes, Maxwell. Okay, so you ate your entire popsicle, and now you want to eat my popsicle. No, Maxwell. This is this is exactly what it means. What what being a father is, Maxwell. <laughs> Here, have one half of my popsicle, and, and and go with it. Go with it over there. So Mariah Carey decides that she absolutely cannot be shot in the movie because if she if if this were happening in real life, that she would be able to deflect the bullets like Wonder Woman. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so one of the co-stars okay. whose name escapes me at the moment. Yeah. He was recently being interviewed on some serious XM station, which is apparently still a thing. And he talked all about how about the reshoots and Mariah Carey being a diva and refusing to die in a film because she could deflect the bullets like a superhero. Yeah. And how pissed off the studio was and the director and yada, yada, yada. And oh, wait, how, they let her do it? I don't know whether or not they let her do it or not, but how much you want to bet that that actor guy's head is now going to roll for shitting all over Mariah Carey. Yeah. Although it is no news that Mariah Carey is like a diva, but Jesus Christ, you're not you're not Wonder Woman, you know? Yeah, no. Well, I, I guess I guess maybe it's the jade egg in her vagina. You know? Maybe. So maybe. so so she feels empowered as a yeah. woman. That and therefore can can deflect bullets like Wonder Woman. Yeah. And, and that is it for movie star and celebrity news this time. But hey, don't cry. Buck up, little campers, because this isn't the end. Oh, no, no. It's the circle! <laughs> the circle of Hatiata, hatiata, hey.